All right, welcome back to our discussion about graphing trig functions. And we are still working on the graphs of the sine function. And we've done a couple of examples of graphing transformations of the sine function. And in this video, we're going to do a couple more. So let's uh, dive in. And we're going to start with this particular function. Um, f of t is equal to 1 half the sine of the quantity 2t minus pi over 2. And we are going to work on graphing two periods of this function. Okay, so let's start by identifying those transformations and the key attributes of this graph. We know that the amplitude is going to be 1 half. We know that there is not a reflection over the x-axis. We know that the period will become 2 pi divided by this coefficient of t, which is 2, so 2 pi over 2, which is pi. And we know we can find the increment by taking that pi and dividing it by 4, so pi over 4. Then we can find our phase shift by taking the negative version of this c value and dividing it by 2. So negative, negative pi over 2, all divided by 2. So that's positive pi over 2 divided by 2, which is pi over 4. And then this graph does not have any kind of vertical shift, so we're still at 0 here. So uh, let's go ahead and start with our phase shift of pi over 4. We're going to count by the increment, which is also pi over 4, to get some more x values for our graph. So pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, otherwise known as pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 4, and then 4 pi over 4, also known as pi, and then 5 pi over 4. Okay, and so now remembering our pattern, mid to max to mid to min to mid. Okay, so let's put our all of our midlines in, and that will be whatever our vertical shift is. Uh, so that will be zero. And then we will use our amplitude. We will add that to the midline and subtract it to the midline to get our maximum and our minimum. So we'll have a positive one half and a negative one half. And then as we continue our pattern in our x values, we are going to subtract pi over 4 from that starting x value. So we're going to subtract pi over 4 from this value here, and we're going to subtract backwards. So that would be 0 and negative pi over 4 and negative 2 pi over 4, which is negative pi over 2, and then finally negative 3 pi over 4. And continuing our y pattern, we'd have a couple more zeros in there, and then a positive and negative one half. So we have a nice table of values which will allow us to plot our points. We can go ahead and do that. And we get something that looks kind of like this. And then when we sketch the curve, we should get a nice, smooth sinusoidal function, nice wavy action going on there, and we're good to go. All right, so let's do one more example like this, and then we'll move into cosine. All right, so let's try this last example, and this example incorporates all the different possible transformations, uh, so we can go ahead and identify those. We know we have an amplitude of the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. We know we have a reflection over the x-axis because of that negative in, or in front of the 3, right? Uh, we know our period will be 2 pi over 4 pi, which will give us 1 half. And then we know if we divide 1 half by 4 or 1 half over 4, we will get 1 eighth. Then as we progress here, we can find our phase shift by taking the negative version of C and dividing it by B. So negative, negative pi over 4 pi, which is going to give us a phase shift of 1 fourth of a unit to the right. Then in this case, we do have a vertical shift. 
here we have a vertical shift of negative one. All right, so let's go ahead and create our table of values, starting with our phase shift of one fourth and counting up by our increments. So one fourth plus one eighth. And we're gonna be thinking about one fourth as two eighths. So two eighths plus one eighth will give us three eighths and then four eighths, which is one half, and then five eighths, and then six eighths, which is three fourths. We know that our sine graph has that pattern that starts at the midline, but in this case, we have a vertical shift and it shifts our midline by negative one. So it's going to shift our midline down one unit. So all of those Y values that were going to be zero are now down one unit at negative one. And because we have that reflection, we go to the minimum before we go to the maximum. So we can go ahead and fill in our midlines all with negative one, and then use her amplitude and add and subtract from the vertical shift to get our maximum and our minimum. So negative one minus three will be negative four, and negative one plus three will give us a positive two. All right, so now I can go ahead and um, continue our pattern backwards for another period. And so we're going to take that 1 fourth and subtract 1 eighth and continue that four times. So we would go back to 1 eighth and 0 and negative 1 eighth and negative 1 fourth. And then we would also continue our Y pattern by adding a couple of negative ones in there and then the alternating negative four and positive two. So now we are at a place where we can go ahead and graph this. Uh, we're gonna plot the points first. And when we plot those points, um, we have that maximum of positive two, a minimum of negative four, and then we have um, everything kind of centering around that line, y equals negative one. So if we sketch the graph or fill in the curve, we have that nice sine function here. And then I went ahead and put the line y equals negative one in there. So you can see um, how that splits the graph right directly in half. And that does become our new midline. And that's about all that there is to graphing transformations of the sine function. And now it's time for us to mosey into um, graphing y equals cosine of t. We'll see you next time.